legacy is really about the impact you have on other people's lives. The impression you make and the, the kindness and the inspiration that you leave people with. And on this week's episode of the Journey to Legacy podcast, we interview Miss Karen Johnson of New Pathways for Youth. Karen and her organization are making such a big impact in the Phoenix, Arizona area, helping to develop underprivileged youth through mentorship and personal development curriculum. They're really, really doing amazing stuff. I think you're going to enjoy today's episode. It's not too long, but there's some really, really great insights and takeaways from it. So let's hop right on in to this episode with Miss Karen Johnson. Karen, thank you for being here. Thank you for having me, Wayne. Excited to talk to you. Thanks. My pleasure. I'm super excited, honestly. Karen, tell everybody just a little bit about yourself. So uh, my name is Karen Johnson. I'm uh, located here in beautiful Phoenix, Arizona, and where I have the privilege of serving as the president and CEO of New Pathways for Youth. Wonderful. It's a New Pathways for Youth. What exactly are you guys doing over at the organization? So this is our uh, 35th year of serving teens in Central Phoenix. So we serve youth ages 13 to 21. All of our youth are um, experiencing poverty and they have high levels of adversity. So three or more adverse childhood experiences. And our program provides a um, one-to-one mentoring program with a, a dedicated adult mentor as well as a specialized personal development curriculum um, that helps the kids really um, realize all the beauty inside of themselves, realize the, the dreams and the goals they have for their lives, despite whatever circumstances they may find themselves in. And then they, they're paired with a mentor who helps them navigate the path um, through high school and, and beyond. Amazing. Like helping youth to actually understand that they aren't the situation that they're in, right? And seeing what's possible in the future. Have have you always been interested in sort of help helping youth? Yeah, so my my whole career has been um kind of around the education um industry and, and work. Uh, I worked for a university for 27 years. We're supporting uh, students uh, who were working to become health providers. I was a teacher. My very first job out of college for a couple of years, I was a teacher, a high school teacher. So helping young people, helping people realize their dreams has really always been a passion for mine. And I, it's my career is sort of culminating now in this work, um, working with kids who, who really need a lot of support and um, whose futures are just as bright and just as uh, amazing as as. Uh, all the students I've been able to work with during my career. Absolutely. Amazing. I mean, yeah, you've, you've definitely helped so many students, right? Like you said, starting out as a teacher and then working at the university to now being the CEO of Pathways for Youth. Uh, did, did you ever, like, person when you were growing up, did you think that you would be a CEO someday? Or, like, how did you feel in comparison to maybe to some of the youth that you talk to today? So what my, uh, my uh, I guess, motivation for a lot of my career was my mom. My mom was a teacher, an elementary school teacher. So uh, when I was little, I used to, you know, go to the classroom with her. Um, she, uh, when I was uh, about five or six years old, my mom started a preschool at our church. And oh, so she sort of was the CEO of the preschool. So I would go home and see her balancing the books and hiring teachers and really focusing on helping kids and helping kids in this church preschool get a great start on their education. So I think that motivation kind of um, inspired me throughout my career and um, knowing how much helping kids is such a, a blessing to be able to do that work. Um, yeah. and I've, I've been really, uh, honored to be able to, to, uh, 
continue that uh, legacy throughout my career as well. Yeah, that's amazing. Wow. So a lot of it stems actually from your mom, right? So she was an inspiration to you, a role model to you in education as well. And, uh, and that's sort of what's, what's taken you forward. How, how often are you seeing, I guess, like parental figures being, I don't want to say like the detriment to some of the youth that you're talking to, but it's, it's just curious in my mind, because obviously it was a big bonus in your life. Yeah, I think, um, you know, the, the families that we work with here at New Pathways, um, they love their kids. They want the best opportunities for their kids. And, um, you know, when we enroll our kids in our program, I always have a message to the parents of thank you for loving your child so much that you're supporting them and being part of our program. And to think that they're like saying to their kid, well, I want you to find another adult in the community to be your mentor. And realizing that maybe they don't have all the skills or life experiences or time because they might be working several jobs or, you know, yeah. trying to get the family out of the situation of poverty that they're in, that they are love their child enough that they want their kid to have this opportunity to connect with another adult mentor who can help them uh, and it's in some different ways than than their own family can. So it's to me that's a like a giant act of love that our families um, and support for their kids. Um, and all of our mentors who are volunteers, who many of them have raised their own kids or, mm -hmm. um, you know, are working out in the community and volunteering for different things. Mm -hmm. They really want to come here to say, I want to be able to help a kid who really needs some additional support. Um, so it's really, it's, um, it's a very powerful experience. Um, we know the mentors in our program benefit from the personal development curriculum we provide to the youth. It works mm -hmm. on the mentors too. Um, mm -hmm. And they get this sort of very unique opportunity to walk along the path with a young person and help them. M many of them are their first in their family to graduate from high school or to go on to post-secondary education. So it's a very, a very powerful opportunity. I mean, an extremely powerful opportunity. You know, it's, it's wonderful how you're saying that some of these, the parents, right, are so supportive and want them to find other mentors as well. I can only imagine that there's maybe some parents that aren't as supportive, right? So maybe if there's like even a young person listening today, like, how do you try and maybe even work with parents a little bit to try and shift their mindset to wanting additional support for their kids and just for youth in general? Yeah. So our our team, as I mentioned, we've been in this community for 35 years. So okay. our program really relies on the uh, connections and the relationships and the trust we have built in the community over those 35 years. So our program is voluntary. So um, the kids have to agree to participate. So mm -hmm. we go work with the schools. We work with the school counselors to identify kids who need additional, might need some additional support. Um, and it might be a good match for a mentor. So we tell the kids what the program is about and they have to agree to participate. And at the same time, we connect with their parents and bring their parents yeah. into our center and share with them uh, what the program is about. Um, we also have a caregiver circle. So it's a, a sort of a condensed six week program where we let the parents know or the caregivers know what their youth is experiencing in the program so they can right. sort of understand and, and be supportive of yeah. the new yeah whether it's vocabulary or new practices that their children are bringing home with them and talking about. Um, mm -hmm. So we really try to make the parents part of the program and, and to um, bring them along so they can continue to support the their uh, young person at home. That's, and it's really been beautiful. been successful. Of, and some right. parents are skeptical at yeah. first and are not quite yeah. sure what this is about and you know mm -hmm. what their who their kids are going to be connected with 
Um, and so we really work to involve them. We invite them to be part of our um, launch ceremony on the final day that they're matched with their mentor so they can really see um, the evolution of, of their youth and and um, uh, be supportive of, of what we're trying to do together with, as partners with them to give their young person every opportunity. Wonderful. So it's, it's sounding to me a little bit that like, you know, the way to get parents on board and I supportive of the development of their youth is to sort of include them a lot, right? To take them along the journey with you. Um, have, have, have you ever seen times or heard stories where parents were just completely against like additional development for their own youth? Very rare. Mm, um, yeah. And again, you know, there are times when it's just not a good fit. And if the parents yeah. aren't supportive, then, you know, yeah. we, we tried our best. Um, but for the yeah. most part, the parents are are really become part of our community, um, yeah. and we engage them. We we include them, and um, you know we also do a third party evaluation of our caregivers of our kids, so we can see how their mindsets have evolved while their youth has been in the program. It's very data driven program that we have. Um, and it's my team really does an amazing job of building those relationships and personal con connections with the people that we're serving. Good, good. I love that you guys are super data driven also, right? Like, so you can actually track progress, see what's worked, what hasn't worked in the past, and what's going to do even better in the future. Um, now, Karen, I'm, I'm a little curious, right? So you had 27 year career in higher ed before you pivoted to essentially a totally different career. Uh, how, how did that change happen? It must have been a little daunting. Yeah, so um, I have, uh, during my time at, at the university I worked for, I had the uh, privilege of serving on several nonprofit boards. Um, so I was on the board of a homeless organization here in Phoenix. I was on the board of the YWCA in Phoenix. So I, I had an understanding of nonprofit work and um, what nonprofit leadership uh, was about. And really, um, as my sort of university career was coming to an end, um, really knew that my passion for kind of the final stage of my career was going to be in doing some more direct service work in the nonprofit sector where I could really have an, more of a direct impact on uh, on young people, on youth, on the community. Mm -hmm. um, and so I was just very um, fortunate that the, the opportunity came about. Um, mm -hmm. It was also kind of during COVID. And I saw at the university um, our health providers, our students who were going out in the community and doing a lot of hands-on work. And that motivated me to say, this is my time also to sort of step out of this comfortable, amazing career and great job that I had and really do something more hands-on in the community. That's wonderful. So you took a lot of almost not necessarily like small steps or stepping stones, but like being involved in all of these different boards, right? Got you used to the space and the understanding that that's probably the direction that you were going, right? right. Do you think, do you think that, that made it easier? Is that something you would recommend to other people? Yeah, I, I um, there are so many in any community, there are so many amazing nonprofits um, who are doing incredible work. And it's very tied up in the business community, of course. The, the work of the nonprofit helps create healthier customers for the business community, a, a healthier environment for um, neighborhoods and for uh, governments. And so having that opportunity to serve on a nonprofit board is just an incredible opportunity to learn new skills, um, to build relationships, to build out your network of people, um, mm -hmm. and to give back. And, and all of those things are um, incredible opportunities I think everyone should take advantage of. 
really incredible opportunities to learn and grow and develop. But I think a lot of people don't realize that they could even even do that. I mean, who's sort of the ideal person? Don't they need to have pre-qualifications to be able to to help in that way? The nonprofit board? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I I think um you have to have a an interest and a commitment to the mission of the organization, whatever it may be. Um and a, just a willingness to do some volunteer work. And it, depending on the board that you're serving on, um, it could include helping them fundraise or helping them uh, with their public relations and marketing work or helping them with governance um, or helping them with their finances um, and sort of doing the financial oversight um, uh, that is critical for a board to be able to do. So there's a lot of opportunities to take your skills and talents and use them to advance a social benefit organization or nonprofit in your community and, and help serve people who are in need. That's that's great. Thank you so much for sharing that because you know I don't think a lot of people realize how easy it is to get involved and to help others in that way, right? If you think about like being a, on the board of directors is this huge, you know, it's almost as being a CEO, right? It doesn't seem tangible almost to most people, right? And so what I'm, I'm also curious about is that, of course, now you are president and CEO of New Pathways for Youth. When you first started going this direction or even got the position, did you have some self-doubts on if you'd be able to do this? And what are some of the lessons you learned? Um, so I um, I didn't have a lot of self-doubt. I knew that my, right. had, my career had really prepared me and my experiences had prepared me to take on this new position. Um, mm -hmm. It was very mm -hmm. important for me to learn as much as I could about our program. So I started in September, and then in November, I went through the program and became a mentor at New Pathways for Youth. So it was important to me to really do the work and really understand at a volunteer level what our program was about, how we connect with young people, and to really be in that mentoring relationship um, with one of the youth in our community that that I'm now a mentor for and have been for, for all the three years. So that really helped me understand the work we do at a, at a different level and to be able to um, provide some more perspective and leadership as to um, how we can continue to advance our mission and, and continue to serve even more youth. Love it. Well, good for you for, you know, you sort of went in and actually did the work on the inside as well. Right. Right. Even, even before, I guess before that, or do you think that is what made it that you didn't have doubt or worries about it because you were ready to go into the middle? I know you said the rest of your career prepared you as well, but it sounds like that must be a big sort of tip maybe for others that are concerned that they could do the same thing. I think, I think really engaging in the work is important. I guess the other um, the other thing that really was helpful to me is I really um, wanted to build a network with other youth nonprofit leaders. So my first few months, um, I reached out to the my friend who's running the Big Brothers Big Sisters organization, and. Uh, my friend at one in 10, who's running another LGBTQ youth organization. So really built a network of fellow nonprofit youth CEOs that we could, you know, have lunch with or have happy hour with and collaborate and share um, insights. Um, that network was really critical for me to understand sort of the lay of the land in the sector to have people to go to for advice or support. Um, and so, uh, you know, there's plenty of work for all of us to do. There's never a sense of competition with each other. It's how can we work together and how can we do better um, to improve each of our own organizations so we can um, serve more, more youth and, and do better in our community. It's a great mindset to have, right? You don't need to have a competitive mindset because you're all in this together, 
right, for an overarching mission, absolutely. And also what a great tip that it's like, you know, get people, surround yourself with people to support you, right, that you can rely on, you can ask questions of, almost get your own mentors, right, just how you're doing in the program. Absolutely. We all need a squad and we all mm -hmm. cheer each other on. We come to each other's events. We donate to yeah. each other's organizations and we we find opportunities to to collaborate together. It's really been um, a great joy of this new position is is being able to build up this network and and mm -hmm. um, connect with other people who are doing this work. That is a absolutely a joy. And so New Pathways for Youth has been around for, for 35 years, which is unbelievable. How do you see the future of the organization? Do you project any sort of changes or what, what's to come? We're always looking for ways to grow and expand in the community. We know there are many more young people who could use a mentor and could use our curriculum. So we've in the past year, we've developed a school based program. So we're going into the schools and delivering our curriculum to more young people. Um, we're looking for partnerships, maybe to move into different areas in the valley here in Phoenix so we can serve different communities. Um, and I'll, always trying to find more people who want to be mentors and want to volunteer for mm -hmm. our organization and to have this amazing life experience of being able to help transform the life of a young person. Um, so growth and focusing on continuing to deepen the impact of our program, improve the outcomes of the youth that we serve, um, support the caregivers and the families of our of our kids. Uh, Lots of, of opportunities for us to just continue to develop and grow here in our organization. Amazing. It sounds like, so the plan is, you know, you're not changing anything much other than expanding laterally, right? That's so great to hear you guys are going into schools and, of course, trying to get more mentors and more volunteers to come help and impact you as well. Um, which is um, amazing. You know, Karen, we like to talk so much about sort of legacy on the show and people have different definitions because a lot of times they immediately t steer towards money. But fortunately, most of the people that I speak to don't. In your mind, what, what does legacy even mean? I think legacy is really about the impact you have on other people's lives and mm -hmm. the... Um, the impression you make and the the um the kindness and the the um inspiration that you leave people with absolutely the impact the kindness the inspiration have you heard the saying that people don't remember what you did they remember how you made them feel yeah absolutely yeah it sounds yeah. like that's a little bit of towards your definition yes for sure uh, I like for it. sure um, yeah, we know our working with the youth that we serve that they may not remember every program you went to or everything you mm -hmm. did, but they remember mm -hmm. how they felt when they were with you and that they yeah. felt empowered and they felt a sense mm -hmm. of agency and they felt like their dreams were important and that they were important to another adult. And all of those things help them uh, throughout their adulthood and help them continue to dream big for themselves. That's wonderful. Do you all ever look at or like what the, I don't know, how, how long are you tracking sort of these youth to see like the changes that are happening in their lives later down the road? Yeah, so we track them through about 21 and okay. then they sort of launch into the world and um, many of our youth have come back to become mentors in our program, which was is really cool. They they yeah. knew what a positive influence it was on them growing up, so they want to be able to do the same for another kid. Um, one of our youth is now on our staff. He's one of our facilitators and and one of our youth enrollment coordinators. So um, it's so great to see them. Um, be successful, launch their own careers and their own families. Um, and often those relationships with their mentors are lifelong. So mm -hmm. they stay in touch and um, continue to support them throughout their lives. That's so great. Yeah, you know, I can only imagine that when you help kids like this, this at youth, 
you're you're not just helping them because it's spreading so much throughout the rest of their lives. That's a perfect example that they're coming back to mentor through you all. And so there's no doubt in my mind they're mentoring others as well. Have have you heard stories about like some of these students going on to make impact elsewhere? Yeah, but, you know, the first place is in their own families. So we have um, kids whose younger siblings then come and enroll in the program because they want to have a mentor, too, and they want to be part of this experience. Um, and uh, one of our youth is now training to be a facilitator in our program so she can teach the curriculum to more kids. Um, so lots of, of great, uh, some of our youth have gone on to start their own businesses um, and are now, you know, own successful businesses in the community and are, are giving back to their family and their communities. So it really helps to, um, the fact that we've really been focused here in Central Phoenix has, has had a long-term impact on the health of this community. There is no doubt about it. Karen, that's really, really, really amazing. I love it. And like that you guys are actually so focused as well it makes such a big difference. I think people often think they need to try and make this global impact where it's like actually like focusing on where you are. Like there's a lot of people in need, huh? Yeah, absolutely. 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 Karen, well, thank you so much for being here. Where can people go to find more, out more about you and about New Pathways for Youth? Yeah, so our website is nf npfy.org um, and all the information is there you can learn about becoming a mentor uh, different ways to support different data we have on our outcomes and our on our curriculum there um, and love to connect with with any anyone who is interested in learning more about us Wonderful. Thank you so much, everybody out there. Check out the show notes down below. Visit npfy.org and uh, join an amazing cause. Karen, thank you so much for being here today. Yeah, thanks for having me. It was fun. And thank you all for tuning in today. I greatly, greatly appreciate it. Please share this episode. Let's help grow Karen's organization, New Pathways for Youth. Check them out. If you are in the Phoenix, Arizona area, Go help out. Actually, if, if you're not even in the Phoenix, Arizona area, take her advice and seek out an organization that you can help. Go offer to be a board member and help them with whatever your skill set might be. Right? We can all make such a big difference in this world without actually having to put in a lot of time or effort. Thank you all for being here once again. I greatly appreciate you. Until next time, you have been listening to the Journey to Legacy podcast.